Well, thank you, Chapo, for the introduction, and thanks for this opportunity to participate. Uh, I'm going to do this without the video, uh, just because I think that's going to make for better sound. Um, so uh, to get started, um, this is me. Uh, I am the Director of Product Development at Roland Wheelchair, and I want to follow up on um, you know Todd's very sort of humble comment that you know um, re regarding how small an organization it is. Uh, I am even less of a uh, seating expert than he is, and what I want to talk about today is Roland's role supporting excellent service delivery through excellent products. Um, Chapel mentioned Ralph Hotchkiss, uh, and I just want to show a picture of him for those of you who know him and those of you who don't. Um, he's our founder and remains the uh, driving force of our organization. Um, this is a recent photo in San Francisco. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is Whirlwind's evolution uh, from the 1970s through the present and you know, going towards 2020. Um, I want to talk about our newest concept of supporting excellent service delivery, uh, something called the, the WPAC or Wheelchair Provision and Assembly Center. And uh, I want to make a plea to everyone attending the symposium um, to help participate in a collaborative impact assessment of, of Roland's work. Um, we do everything that we can to assess our own impact, but we very much welcome and I would say need uh, objective external help to assess what we're doing. So I want to start with history. Um, Whirlwind's history was working with very small shops which were manufacturing wheelchairs and serving their immediate community. Historically, Whirlwind chose to work with organizations in which wheelchair riders not only participated but actually led the organization. Uh, Whirlwind saw itself as a technical hub connecting a network of independent actors. Uh, I say actors because the local organizations were the drivers serving their own community with products and services. We supplied them with technology. We would share the ideas from the different organizations. Uh, this approach, the small shop approach, had many notable successes. Um, the knowledge of the community and the accountability to that community was unmatched. When you were working with a small organization made up of community members, 100% of whose sales went in that community. Um, as far as the technology and the service, it was both regionally appropriate and then also individually customized as, as the chairs were often hand built. There are also some very important successes of wheelchair riders in leadership roles. Uh, again, it was the knowledge of context and of disability and the credibility that those leaders had within the disability community and also within uh, enlightened um, government organizations. Uh, and as a result, these factories, these small shops, became centers for advocacy in a lot of activity other than simply manufacturing or even distributing wheelchairs. There were a lot of challenges, however. Uh, the most notable one is product cost. Uh, a small factory is buying materials retail. They cannot compete uh, on scale simply of purchasing, let alone take advantage of the economies of scale of large factory equipment and machinery. Um, there is a real challenge in fit and finish, and, and notice that I'm not saying quality because often the chairs were very high quality, but they looked like they'd been made in small shops, and it, and it turns out that the appearance is very, very important uh, to wheelchair riders in the developing world. Uh, this is a lesson that I've learned over and over again. Um, people's appearance is, is extremely important to them, and small shops really struggled to match the fit and finish of imported products. Finally, it's just hard work to manufacture wheelchairs, and it distracted a lot from other activities. The other challenge was the variability of clinical skills. 
uh, historically, people with disabilities were often excluded from clinical education because they were excluded from education in general. They, they didn't have the opportunity to get formalized training as, as PTs and OTs. So people were self-taught, and, and some of them were, were really excellent. And in people working with other people with similar types of disabilities, people who knew their own disability and their own context very well, could be very, very effective in a clinical role. But the quality was not consistently the case. There's no reason, for example, that an adult with spinal cord injury from America would be particularly skilled at fitting a child with cerebral palsy in Africa. So um, while it was sometimes excellent, it was not always excellent. Um, in the last decade, there's been more and more demand for good quality wheelchairs. And so Whirlwind has tried to scale up the number of products that we can produce and work with service delivery systems that can work at a similar scale. Um, so we're work working in large regional factories. We're also working in East Asian factories. And then we're partnering with organizations that have the capacity, capacity to do service delivery and training. This slide, for example, is a training that took place in Peru managed by LDS. Um, this occurred before the WHO training was available. So they have their own system that is compliant with WHO guidelines uh, that they developed internally. Um, I want to throw this in because this is another important uh, secret weapon. This is an example of uh, a couple involved in long-term delivery of humanitarian services to a particular community. And uh, the Mormons do this very frequently. LDS Charities does this very frequently. They'll, they'll send a couple to be in a particular region for a long time. Um, I find that even if that couple is not particularly clinically uh, expert, they know what they're looking at and they know what a broken chair is and, and they often can see the result of poor service delivery in terms of who's actually active, who's actually going out and getting jobs. Um, so yeah, that long-term follow-up is really important. Um, successes of this model, uh, well, the, the, easy, the, the most obvious is it's faster to scale than, than to build sustainable businesses from the ground up. Uh, you get more consistent product quality from the bigger factories, and you have the opportunity for more consistent service quality if the organization does a good job. Uh, the challenge is, is you need a really good partner. Uh, not every partner has this capacity. Uh, second of all, there's a real challenge to local permanence and local leadership when it's all driven by people from the outside. It can be done such that there is local accountability. And again, the key is long-term partnerships. Um, there's a logistical issue in that a container schedule is, is, is kind of lumpy. You get, you get large doses of 300 wheelchairs at a time where the service may only want five. Or, you know, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, do, if you don't have a way to store the wheelchairs and, and kind of provide them as needed, it can cause trouble. So anyway, based on our history, um, Whirlwind was looking for to participate in a system that had local permanence, that was sustainable, that was locally accountable, and was highly locally visible. We wanted to promote leadership by wheelchair riders in those communities. We wanted a consistent, high-quality product, um, and we wanted selection of that product to be user-driven, not this is what we got, take it or leave it, but a range of products from a range of manufacturers so that the user would have some role in choosing what was important to them. Uh, we wanted consistent, high-quality service delivery. Uh, we wanted it to be demand-driven, uh, meaning you could get the service when you needed the service, not when the volunteers were in town. Uh, we wanted the ability to work with organizations that had their own service delivery capacity or didn't. Um, we wanted to use INGO support as a means of leading into government support, the long-term goal has to be local government support. So you have to have a system that, while it may use INGOs today, it can seamlessly transition to using government tomorrow. And then finally, it has to be scalable and replicable. It can't rely on exceptional individuals to, to, to function. Um, the role that Whirlwind would play, we are contributors to an international team, and that team has local leadership. Uh, we are not service delivery experts. We seek to partner with service delivery experts 
and we seek to make all foreign actors supporters, not leaders, and to let the local partners be the leaders. Um, here is Ralph, by the way, a more recent photo of Ralph. He's in China sourcing things like bicycle components, bike pumps, the things that make their way into our wheelchairs. He's still directly involved in the day-to-day -day technical operation, uh, making sure that the priority of the user makes its way into the details of what we do. So our concept is something we're calling the WPAC, the Wheelchair Provision and Assembly Center. And its characteristics are a strong local partner in a leadership role, high quality mass manufactured parts which are assembled locally, and grant supported training and service delivery. Uh, parts are made overseas, they're shipped in country, they're assembled in country. That local partner assembles, sells, trains, provides, repairs, does all of the service delivery, and then reorders when they need them. Uh, when we say small, a strong local partner, we're looking for partners with a history of service to the community, uh, a robust, sustainable organization, and one that has wheelchair riders in a leadership role. Mass manufactured parts, uh, we, Roland's job is to basically refine the design of our products and to diversify our products and to make them available. Uh, however, again, our WPAC partners will not be restricted to Roland products. They can order whatever their users need. Matt, you have only one minute. Okay. Um, so getting to the important bit, um, the training is supported, is using the WHO materials and at the moment is grant funded. Um, we are, our training partner is Wheels for Humanity. Uh, it's in particular their project in Job, Jakarta. It's funded by USAID and we believe it's a model. Um, we're providing consulting through Accenture. It's a management consulting firm that has uh, global experience. Um, our first WPAC partner is MARDEX, a Mobility Aid and Appliance Research and Development Center in Nigeria. They're an experienced partner. We're really looking forward to working with them. And finally, this is everybody's homework assignment, if I can just have half a minute on this. Um, we're doing certain things to promote impact and assess our own impact. For example, we're using Accenture to develop a system of remotely assessing the quality of service provided. And Todd's presentation is interesting in that. I look forward to talking to Todd. Um, but we need everyone's help to assess our impact. For example, I love this photo, but someone who's better at seating would look at this and say, that chair is too wide. That guy doesn't have adequate trunk support. He's going to get scoliosis. We can do better than this. And finally, uh, just a, one other ally that Whirlwind is enlisting is we are selling our product to the U.S. consumer. Uh, we have FDA approval. U.S. customers are paying cash for the identical product that we're using overseas. And this is one of the ways we're just kind of checking ourselves, just trying to make sure that the products that we're distributing uh, pass muster with U.S. consumers and U.S. clinicians who are empowered to complain about it. And then finally, I just, I just love this slide. This is... Um, a protester in Bolivia, he's just marched hundreds of miles and been told that he could not meet with the president and he's angry about it and he's now fighting with the riot police. Um, I just love this as an example of we had nothing to do with this. We just got this guy a wheelchair and he's now out there in the streets advocating for himself. Um, I think I'm out of time, so uh, that's all. Thank you.